For case 13, we have a 31-year-old woman presenting with back pain and paresthesias. Here we have some axial images through the upper portion of the thoracic spine. Have a bone window on the left here and a soft tissue window on the right. I think these are from slightly different levels. Here you have sagittal images again with a bone window on the left and a soft tissue window on the right. The patient went on to have an MR of that same lesion at the cervical thoracic junction. So now you see, uh, see the lesion here. So we have T2, pre-contrast and post-contrast. So I've, I've labeled those for you to make it a little easier. If you're having trouble telling, there's some bright CSF up here on the T2. Uh, the pre-contrast T1 has dark CSF and this also has dark CSF. So you're probably looking at another T1, uh, although some of the structures are a little bit brighter. Just think about your diagnosis here. You want to think about what is the most likely diagnosis. And which of these would you say is not in the differential? You'll sometimes see questions like this. Uh, many times you don't have to know what the diagnosis is. You just have to know which one of these is not like the other. Uh, so in this case, this is an osteosarcoma of the spine. It's an aggressive bone tumor. It's arising from the bone itself. Uh, osteosarcomas are more common elsewhere in the body, but about 3% occur in the spine. Uh, men slightly more than women and in the fourth decade. Uh, the key features are destructive masses with soft tissue and matrix formation. Uh, matrix on CT, you can see it looks like new bone formation, but on MR it tends to look like a signal void. These are aggressive lesions that have to be aggressively managed. So here you see the first image that I showed you, and what you see is some expansion of the posterior elements here. Like this is far too big. And uh, this is uh, where you get the idea that there's some new bone formation in here, like this kind of ground glass uh, is not present uh, typically in the posterior elements. Here we, at a slightly different level, we have a soft tissue window. You've got a big soft tissue mass involving the left neural foramen. A uh, key feature here though, is there's a lot of bone that's absent. Okay, you could have a schwannoma, for instance, that caused remodeling of the neural foramen, but you wouldn't expect uh, whole portions of the bone to be missing. Here on the sagittal images, you see the same features that you're seeing on the axials. You have the kind of matrix formation centrally. Again, you see that kind of dense ground glass kind of bone there. Here it's like very dense if you look at soft tissue window with surrounding areas of destruction. And then on the MR, you just uh, find those similar features. So this image is off a little bit to the left of the midline. Here you see this area that's dark on all of the images is the bony matrix formation, whereas the surrounding area is hyper intense on T2, a very destructive mass, and you see it's very solid. And you see on post-contrast imaging, there's pretty solid enhancement. So if you had to say this mass, and you're thinking about aggressive masses because of the extent of bone destruction, the associated soft tissue masses, uh, associated with it. So you need to be thinking about aggressive lesions. So based on the features we've seen so far, we know that that was an aggressive mass, but when you see new bone formation, it can help with your diagnosis if you try to determine what kind of new bone matrix you're looking at. And the two types of bone matrix are osteoid and chondroid matrix. Osteoid you'll typically see described as cloud-like, trabecular, or ill-defined. And here are a couple of examples. This is an osteoid osteoma. So you have kind of dense bone here, a surrounding lytic area, maybe some additional new bone surrounding it. There's an osteoid osteoma of the occipital condyle. So again, new bone. It looks like the adjacent bone. Here's our case. Uh, so we have this bone. It looks here. It looks very similar to the bone that's in the center of the vertebral bodies here. So that's typically uh, described as osteoid. Whereas if you look in the contrast to osteoid, chondroid is typically described as focal, stippled or ring and arc. So this is a chondrosarcoma of the pelvis. It's extending off of the uh, iliac here into the posterior gluteal musculature. You see there's these small little dots of calcification. If you look at it, maybe you can identify some arcs uh, kind of arc-like structures, and that's just where the bone is forming around cartilage. And so those uh, that arcs and rings burn that into your uh, memory because you'll see that on tests quite a fair amount. 
The question that you had here is which of these is not in the differential. So even without seeing this, as I pointed out, you can tell that the one that does not fit here is the nerve sheath tumor schwannoma. These are relatively benign lesions with non-aggressive features. Uh, this one looks like it's coming from the bone, is aggressive, and has matrix formation. To see those features would be unusual for a schwannoma or nerve sheath tumor, whereas the remainder of these lesions can definitely do that. Now, this one ended up being an osteosarcoma. You would, would reliably, uh, I mean, you would give a differential in this case, not necessarily reliably come to that conclusion every time. But what you need to tell them is that it's an aggressive osseous lesion.